clean a couple of walla here with my dark sizzle knife. Still lively. Short walleye cleaning video here. I'm not the most expert walleye butcher, but I don't waste much. These fish were caught maybe an hour before this butchering process. I did slit their throats and let them bleed out, something I always do feel that it improves the quality of the meat to bleed them out. You can see these ones at this time of year are pretty fed, pretty bloody. Um, as compared to some of the ones that we catch in the winter time. First thing I do is I remove the pelvic fins and anal fin doing right here. So just prior to that, slice upwards under the pelvic fins, try not to cut myself, and then remove the anal fin completely. So then cutting just behind the gill plate, upwards towards the head, to the spine, turn the knife around and follow it along the spine all the way to the tail, cutting through the rib bones one by one as you go. Here I'm just taking the cheeks out. As always, some people like to leave the skin on the cheeks and crisp it up. I myself like to remove it as you saw there. Here's the fatty here. Both of these fish were, the first one was 19 inches, this one's probably 20 and a half, but uh, fat, full, didn't show the stomach contents or anything, but it was definitely a full fish. Same thing here, I started with cutting upwards under the pelvic fin and then removing the anal fin. This one pull up the guts because it was full fat and yeah, I just didn't want to cut through them. A lot of times if the stomach's empty I won't bother, like I did on the first one. I didn't bother, I just cut the fillets right off. Saves uh, 30 seconds or something like that maybe, maybe not even. But anyways, so then cut up under the pectoral fin towards the head until you get the spine. Turn the knife around so it's facing the tail. Follow the spine down back to the tail, cutting through the rib bones as you go. You can see this one I'm twisting a little bit to make sure that the knife stays right up against the spine and cuts it off as closely as possible. And there you go. The flash there of not very much meat left on that one side, so not a lot of wastage. I like to take the fillets off the back first, and then clean up a little bit, and then I'll get to the rib bones and the pin bones and take them off with skin. The knife is pretty sweet, I gotta say. Our sizzle knife is pretty good, pretty happy with it. Definitely the best fillet knife that I have owned to date, I believe. People always say when you're fishing saltwater fish, you never want to clean it with fresh water. I don't know, it's a little bit of a, not sure about that one. Some people do clean it with fresh water, especially if you're gonna freeze it right away or cook it right away. Uh, definitely if you're out somewhere and you're cleaning fish, be it fresh water or salt water, 
you don't really want to wash it because that introduces bacteria. So if you're packing it out or something like that, which I have done, it's best to let it case. So let it sit out without washing it off and bring it home that way and then clean it up when you get home. These couple of walleye in particular, I ate the next day. So yeah, just pack them in a little bit of fresh water because I don't want them to dry out and heat them up the next day. Didn't bread them like a traditional, did them more of like with a sweet honey hot sauce grilled, tried something new. So yeah, it was delicious. Didn't make a video. We'll do that some other time. Here, just taking the ribs off of the fillets. So there's the pin bones that run horizontally outwards from the ribs. So just cutting through those first and removing the rib bones and the belly meat, anything left around the anal area, if any. Taking them off of the skin. I actually thought this meat looked a little bit darker than springtime fishing, which is pretty much the last time I fished Lake Manitoba, Portage Bay. The fishing really turns on right after the ice comes out off the lake. So the season opens second weekend of May, and from there there's about four to six weeks of really awesome fishing. And then it kind of dies off. So the fish flies come out, other bugs, the fish gorge on the larva, and they pretty much stop eating. Here I almost cut myself on camera. <laughs> Try not to do that. Again, removing the rib bones off of the larger fish. The pin bones going through are obviously also larger, a little bit harder to cut through. So Definitely don't want to press too hard. You want to let the knife do the work for you and especially not cut yourself. Fishing is generally pretty slow through the summer. Still catch a few, but it's not the frenzy that you get in the spring and fall. So it took a while. It was a pretty warm fall. It took a while for the water to cool down. And once it did, the fish really seemed to start actively feeding, and this is the product of that. Removing the pin bones from the fillet, you just run the knife right along them. You can see the line, the lateral line there. So you basically just run the light knife on either side of the lateral line. The sharper the knife you have, the better, easier this part is, and the less meat you waste. So you basically pull like a little noodle out of there. It's not wasting much. It's a lot nicer to eat it without those little bones in there. And those are the ones that get stuck in your teeth or in the back of your gums or something like that. I hate those ones. There you go. A couple of nice walleye butchered, four fillets, four cheeks, ten minutes. 
Like I said, I'm not the fastest at butchering fish, but I don't waste very much meat and try not to leave any bones in there. Well, this one I did get caught on a couple. I'm not sure where they came from after watching the video, but Miss L did find a couple of bones in her fish the next day. It never happens to me. It's always the person that doesn't like it, right? <laughs> Alright, so that's it. Like, comment, subscribe, come back and check out more videos. I'll cook some fish next time or butcher a deer or something. Who knows?